All right, guys, back by popular demand, we're going to be doing another podcast style video where we're talking about knives. And just so I don't mess this up, make sure I get this, uh, this title correct here. Yeah, so essentially what we're going to be going over is early inspirations for like how we got started in the knife world. I also wanted to throw like maybe some grail knives in there, like knives that we, you know, coming up in the knife world, like you look at and you're like, man, that would be so cool to own. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to try to cover in this video. Obviously, there's never any time constraints. We're going to be going over some cool stuff, ultimately seeing my friend Ryder here and his kind of progression of like the things that led uh, like the designs, the knives, the makers that led him to wanting to make his own blades and uh, yeah, and going from there. So you can uh, add your commentary. Cool. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, you guys know, <laughs> if you guys don't already, PKS, or Polar Knife Steel. Yes, follow um, me on the Instagrams, the YouTubes, uh, yes, and PKS Customs, and uh, what, what Polar Knife Steel. Yes, you yes. already said it. Um, <laughs> The, yeah, and then my business page is Hartley Knife and Steel on Instagram, um, and we're gonna, it's I'm still new to making, so it's uh, we're 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 filling things out. <laughs> right, right, no, totally, and uh, yeah, and as per usual, they'll be linked in the description below if you want to check them out. Definitely check out the YouTube channel for sure. Always support my uh, fellow content creators. But yeah, without too much further ado, uh, I was playing with this. Pilar, I have, this is the Flytanium, or yes. I keep saying titanium, Flytanium carbon fiber show scale and backspacer on that guy. It definitely is overkill because the knife literally costs less than that handle. That handle costs more uh, than the whole blade itself. So I'm like, it's a little weird, but. I remember the Vox, like the F series and yeah, stuff. Like Those are F5. so nice. Gosh. Yeah. They, I was, still look that at was them. a whole time. Yeah, I still look at them from time to time. Like, should I do it? They're almost like lion steel for me. Like, uh, gosh, uh, like lion steel. Don't get me wrong; they still make good knives and stuff. Yeah. But like back when they came out with what was like the TR something it was like that, like aluminum handled uh, frame lock that had like the, the screw in, yeah, yeah. Uh, overstop travel, so you could like lock it up and it become like a fixed blade kind of thing. <laughs> like everyone knew it was hokey, but it was still really cool. And they're just beefy blades, but. That's kind of where, like, Vox Nays really sits for me. I'm yeah. just like, ah, Jesper is really cool. but So his customs are different, right? The <laughs> mm -hmm. the It's those collab uh, pieces that are kind of, you know... The, if you could find a custom, uh, mm -hmm. that would be worth it. But, you know, for sure. I don't even the know what he's making these days. Isn't he affiliated with... Uh, maybe that's Onso. I get those guys mixed up. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot of them that are running similar spheres. Who, who's uh, affiliated with Giant Mouse? I think Voxnaze is. It is Vox. I think okay. I think it is Voxnaze. So that stuff is interesting, but I don't I don't even know what he's doing outside of that. Like if that's all he's doing, then um, you know, his customs are probably pretty expensive. But you never know. Some of those guys, like when Curry fell off, his stuff became super cheap. Right, right. You get a Curry for like a couple hundred bucks, and and I remember when they were trading closer to. Like fifteen, uh, so it's right. That's a that's a different era, but it, it is <clears throat> like the economic dichotomy definitely yeah changes. Anyways, so now jumping into like the actual, <laughs> I think for the most part, box um, is got, in there. Box well, is in there oh, for me, sure, and for I think sure. it's like it's a really good way to hop into yeah. it. Um, but yeah, so I have a couple Gavcos. I'm trying not to like throw this sheath off this chair, but anyways, I have a couple Gavcos here, and I think that the Gavco knives are like. A good place to start kind of officially getting into this because i think one thing that makes um us like have really like i think one of the reasons we get along so well is we had a really similar start time frame to getting into knives and part of that was also gavco as we mentioned yeah. in the last video um some people here use gavco to go to sleep um <laughs> i used to fall asleep to gavco right right like his voice still just soothes me into sleep gav if you see this thank you uh <laughs> and you, that's you should clip that in like, right just like gav if you're part. watching this <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah, so Gavco, Tough Thumbs, yeah. and quite a few other just really kind of low-key makers on 
the YouTubes is often like really when I started getting into knives and like wanting to know more, this is kind of where I started. And uh, granted, I just got this Gavco nurse. This is pretty new for me, but undoubtedly like Gavco and his impact um, on my desire to really like go after knives and to know, I think the biggest part is to like know what a quality knife looks like. And maybe like definitely these have very unique styles that are, you know, not everyone's taste. So obviously maybe these aren't it for you, but um, undoubtedly, like, I don't know, I think there's a lot of quality to them regardless. And like I said, even if you don't like these styles, their impacts early on were what like led me to know, like, what is a good steel? What does a good steel look like? What is a good blade shape? Cause I think a lot of these guys, not to like, I know you haven't talked yet, but I think like a lot of these guys were oftentimes, especially Gavco, like he started off as a collector. Yeah. And so like he would show you like, man, maybe not a poltergeist, but like definitely spider toes. <laughs> I'll just grab the spider toe again. Um, but you know, like, they showed you what knives were quality and taught you a lot. I think like that era on YouTube, especially like there's a lot of homebrew going on and like homebrew is great, but homebrew has a very, uh, and I, I call it homebrew making because I try to not do that. Uh, like I'm not using wood. I don't use carbon steel. Like I kind of broke the mold for what people usually do. I, and I'm not special. Like this is not uncommon. Now you see people like, um, Walkman uh, and uh, who else is killing it? Triple Stripe. Like these guys are coming out of the gate killing it. Like Triple Stripe, MST, those guys are both real young and they're killing it. I don't know what they were doing before, but they do not li look like homebrew makers. And that's what is, is kind of the difference. And Gavco kind of fit that EDC mold. Um, and Gavco introduced me to Tough, and what? Tough introduced me to. Vance and like Vance introduced me to Dirk and like it just it goes uh, the the rabbit hole the iceberg goes deeper right. uh, but the the uh, who was it uh, Tough and Gab did a did a video talking about like the Browse Reloader right. and the Quaken um, pre order uh, from Hoback and like I was in on that original pre order I never ended up buying it but. Um, you know, stuff like that, you know, Browse was right around that time frame. Mm -hmm. So they, there was that YouTube community and I feel like at the time there's really only like, what are you going to watch? Nothing fancy? Is mm -hmm. it lightweight? There's shit. Um, I think Blood of Patriots came around sometime in that category. Uh, Dirk Razor Sharp was one that I always watched a lot of and that's where I found Poltergeist and that's why I, you know, to this day, uh, will continue to wait, uh, ages uh for another <laughs> for another folder guys um four year wait for that i got the tritium thumb stud uh and his signature just like minimalist construction and i, I like his designs which are a little out there um, which is where I got a lot of my influence from. Poltergeist, Gafco, Tough, um, all very, very influential on how I build knives and so Right. Uh, and I think part of like like I was saying, like their influence goes so much deeper that like, even if you don't buy a lot of gavs or tough thumbs knives, like these were some of the people who like early on established their names. I, I want to say, I don't want to say like as knife experts, cause you know, I think they were well, learning as they went along. It was the YouTube, right? Like, like right. if you were, you know, my generation was looking everything up on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. That was, that was when, um, that was what you did, right? Like we, I was around for the inception of YouTube. I remember when right. it didn't work well, <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. like, um, and so growing up on that, uh, you, there's only so much stuff to watch. And, and some of these guys have been doing knife stuff on forums and things like that. Uh, I don't know if blade forums was a thing that's not really ever been my jam, but USN, um, all these different like micro communities and, you know, some of them, even longer than that if you really get into it. Uh, but YouTube for us was like, that's where you went, you were looking at knives, and you were bound to fall into one of these rabbit holes. And it's only gotten deeper and bigger uh, since then. I mean, now there's way more makers. And I'm, I'm not a historian on this stuff, but that was kind of how I saw it. Oh, yeah, Dirk with the... I don't know if Dirk... I mean, I remember he had trouble blades. Mm -hmm. I forget how I was introduced to Kingdom Armory, but... Um, that's just the time frame, you know, like that was cleaver style, uh, build a yeah. butcher, 
the what the debt collector from Trouble Blades. Oh, like yeah. um, there was so much uh, in that you know overbuilt. Like that that was the era was when freaking like Medford leading the way. Yeah, that's when I really got into knives. Was like mm. that time frame. Like 2015 is when I went to my first show, and so that. Like that's late in the game because I had been into it for a long time before then, and you know all there was was not fancy. Dirk just like kind of talking over a blade or one of Vance's videos. Um, that's how I found Otha. Otha knives, super slept on, super cool dude. Go check him out on Instagram. Otha, O T H A. Um, no affiliation, not sponsored. Uh, while you're there, go follow me, Polar Knives and Steel, or Polar Knives Steel um, for the culture. Um, for the cultures nobody name. nobody <laughs> commented on my branding last time which means i didn't do enough so, right he needs know, to plug his prepare channel <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just he's gonna actually be the one editing this video and it's exactly just be basically large banner ads yep. just everywhere <laughs> i please right now just a like, banner across the across right. the bottom like go right. follow me <laughs> you're like these are gonna override youtube's ads they're exactly. gonna be just pks ads <laughs> I love that. Here's a 30 minute ad break. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, ah. And I, I feel like, you know, I, I remember probably the first time, I, I mean, I think Tuff introduced me to Skelton and Skelton obviously um, had a, a big impact on that generation. There mm -hmm. was just so much and he was collecting at a level and consistently enough that, you know, you were seeing a lot of stuff. Right. But I, I think Tuff was the first time I saw Strider. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and he, he had a couple and he's like, I sold off everything else to make right. way for knife making. Well, and I think that's one of the really important things and what I wanted to hammer home in this video or part of it is that like I've been saying a lot, um, specifically Hinder, which you're holding, Strider, um, which is represented in Chris Reeve, which is represented here too, that like we talk a lot about like what is the holy trinity of knives back in like when we were coming up and those were the three brands, but like how did they get there? Like they didn't just pop up and like over the sky and be like, this is it. It's not a message from God, but rather people like tough, like Gavco, um, gosh, there was a, a firefighter. I'm trying to remember his name, but I'm blanking on it. Uh, smoke eater. I oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Smoke eater is cool. Yeah. Um, I forget, he had some numbers in his name too, but these are the types of fundamental people that were really low-key in the industry, um, and, and they would grow, obviously, Tough and Gav are certainly influential, um, and so are others, but these guys were the people that, like you just said, like with Gavco, it's like he sold off half of his, like, let's say Emerson's, Spyderco's, like he sold off parts of his collection to buy that one, you know, Strider, and so it's like, how did we get to understand or know or think that Hinder or Chris Reeve, Strider were the pinnacle of knife um, life, so to speak. Um, it's really these guys that were very influential and it's not just that they had um, bought these knives to like show them off and stuff, but genuinely they would sit there and explain, well, like this is why, you know, I bought a Hinder or it has one of the best flipping actions, you know, that you can buy or All like right. even... All right. Let Settle I mean, down. I mean, Settle down. Of the right. time, I mean, like, honestly, Hinderer was, like, the flipper knife. Like, when they first dropped, like, no one else was making flippers uh, as far as knives go. And so, I mean, granted, there are better knives. There's even better <laughs> flippers here, to be honest with you. All right, even I will say, good. this right. one, I, this is, like, <laughs> crack. I, I cannot put it down. Um, as you can tell. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, yeah. It's it, clean. It's nice. But it has a good detent. I think that's the distinction. Because at one point, Hinder was saying that he likes softer detents. Right. And we're not going to talk about it, but that's kind of a thing right now. If you've got a soft detent, all right? Right, right. Um, <laughs> we I only like it. hard steel and hard detents. And, yeah. uh, you know, hard steel. Hard, Very hard. <laughs> hard steel. lock bar inserts. <laughs> yes, uh, we like the hardest of steel. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so, I mean, ultimately, like, at the time when it came down to it, um, you know, these were the knives that people were selling off their collections of Benchmade, you know, like, grip tillions and stuff. And generally, like, when you come up in the, the industry, you're like, oh, you know, Benchmade's, like, maybe even the Rolex of the knife world. And it's 
<laughs> just kidding about that. But, um, <laughs> you know, you think it's like a decent user, you know, it's like the bread and butter of um, the knife world. And so it's like a decent user. So you see these people who, you know, we're watching and like I said, they break it down of like, they're selling half their collection, but man, the steel, the actions, the build it's quality. A, it's a gateway drug, you right. know, like, like. Benchmade is the shit weed of no, <laughs> like, uh, this is that. this is this is your gateway. You know, you go into your sporting goods store, they have Benchmade or or something else. And I feel like Benchmade was probably where most people like, everybody had a mini grip. This was right. like standard for you mm -hmm. know getting in. And if you let it stop there and you didn't explore further and look at other people's setups, then you'd stop at a griptillion for a while. You might buy a couple and collect griptillions. And like you said, then people would sell off all of them after they had tried some stuff and they start going, you know, mm -hmm. oh, let's, uh, we want to get, you know, a mini grip, right? I right. actually prefer the mini grip to the full size. I can um, pull a mini grip out, but, but too no, late. I, I have one somewhere. Um, one of my me. access lock springs is broken. And, Bench uh, me, send help. <laughs> I, it doesn't even go in my case anymore. Um, but that's, the... that's because I'm bougie. Um, mm -hmm. and I, d but I don't have a hinder. Um, I got, I got custom strider. I don't, I didn't bring a custom strider today, so we're Fair slacking, enough. but, yeah. um, for shame, but yeah, no. So I think like, that's like why these people are relevant to the talk. You got a rattly screw. Is there a rattle in that one? It's, it's this one. This happens on mine too. Oh, is it that one? Can yeah. you hear that? A little ASMR. I like it. Sleep right whisper. Now. Oh shit! <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, rip yeah, headphone no. users. Yes. Yeah. Um, everybody um, just turned it up. They're like, I want to hear it, and then I just <laughs> laugh. <laughs> and they're like, I was falling asleep. But yeah. So like, you know, people like, let's say, Smoke Eater would, you know, talk about the quality control, the fit, the finish of these blades, and then you know, you would go out and buy them yourself. And so I think like that's kind of how it progressed, and that's how these companies, especially, began to develop the traction and reputation that they currently have. And I think it's really important to note because once again, like nowadays it's a little bit more easy to see, but like, you know, before YouTube, before people like Taylor Martin were making um, videos, like no one really knew what high quality knives were we were we were all kind of figuring it out now like i said you automatically know something like chris reeve is a quality knife right like i remember know, when people but, like any video they'd pull out the reeve because it was a gold standard right now i feel like that's kind of like old news like i don't see well i don't really watch a whole lot of reviews you might actually be able to speak to this more um, i do watch a lot of reviews do they still pull out sabenzas N no not sabenzas this is Sometimes disappointing in it really is honestly this I mean, is the this gold is standard this still is it the still gold is the gold standard, standard. Like, as far totally as still the gold standard. for production knife like if your riate can't touch it and riate is good uh, for but the it, most part, yeah. it, it can't touch a Reeve, then you got problems. So your your uh, manufacturing company, if it can't touch a, a twenty one, then mm. you got issues, you know. Right. And so that's kind of the the. Yeah, I'd like to see a return to that. I mean, I don't watch reviews, so I'm not your target, you know, customer. <laughs> but um, yeah, like that's. I mean, it's still it to this day. Standard. Like if I if I go to a show and and I can't get kind of a Reeve feel, like you know, and not even just feeling, but as far as tolerances for, exactly. for production, like it, it needs to be there, uh, yeah. to, to be quality. Something like the, the stove pipe, like this is, you know, people say, Oh, it's a spider co and it is an expensive spider co mm -hmm. I will say. Um, but I, I had this at the last show and people were just fidgeting with it. And it's like, because it's, it's got that, it's got that it factor. It, it's, tight tolerances um it's you know well built and it it's got the tie scale and good steel what what more can you ask for in a pocket knife and it is the same price as a sabenza was was uh you know yeah. a couple of years ago so uh yeah it's uh that that's i mean everything like uh you know yeah that, i remember that was when that was what people pulled out, mm -hmm. you know, and it was because that was the, the metric for what a good knife was. And I, I don't know. I don't know how to like quantify 
how influential seeing that was and people would compare everything to a strider and, and there is a reason for that there weren't that many manufacturing companies back right. then we've seen a, an explosion of engineers leaving their career fields mm -hmm. and just like getting real good at, at starting these manufacturing companies or custom right. companies i mean uh, Shark Knife Co. Uh, I'm pretty sure it started that way. Mascus Precision, right. um, and these are customs, but they are you know production quality. I mean, custom prices. But, um, right. And no, no offense, you know, like a Mascus table is twelve, mm -hmm. um, maybe more now. Oser's the same way. He's machining a lot of that stuff, and you know, nothing wrong with it. But uh, he does lottos. Like I think table on a slippy is. Uh, 17 now which is steep steep for me i could be wrong but you know there's no way meant to knock oser uh i think he makes some of the best um best knives in the industry right now i really like his stuff and he's made some of my favorite knives in that style um but man uh it's not you know and, and a tengu isn't cutting it all right like the the stuff that comes from benjamin is not doing it for me i mean um, and i think that's part of it like hype is a very interesting factor um in like i don't know it's whenever we start getting into more expensive knives it gets more and more difficult because i know for a slip joint eh, that's a nice slip joint double I mean, detent so technically i don't know what the metric is for i think it's called a slip joint still i think it but is. it's two detents which is cheating because it's not the spring on the back right but I don't know, it's, that's a really nice slip joint though, um, not gonna lie. But yeah, so when we get to more expensive knives, because recently, especially with the 522 Narrows, or was it 522? Nah, maybe I'm wrong on the number, but the Narrows uh, from Benchmade, oh. you know, was commanding a very expensive, well over $500 price point, and the people were quick to say, you know, well, what about the stove pipe, or what about the Nirvana? And I think the reality is, um, like maybe there is a bit of uh, or a degree of perceived quality but by and large it's like the manufacturing we know to be the execution i guess is not always the best with benchmade or a spider co like you know their heat treats are up to snuff even their taiwan or taiwanese made blades are arguably as good as their american blades and that is something that's tough to admit even some with some chinese manufacturers like riate or riot however you'd like to pronounce it besides you know, the Besides the um, the Pilar um, and maybe the Browse, I think that's the only overseas uh, build that's here. Uh, I don't know where the Grams. The Browse isn't overseas. That's American. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. This this all of his soldiers were American. Hmm. It's um you might be getting confused because the Sog Snarl, which is the knife uh, that got in the hot water with Sog. I, I think it's um, just the feeling. Like, there's something about this, mm -hmm. but I think that's just the Browse thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's... Is this how this whole meant yep. to be hold? I don't yep. think I've ever done this before. That's how it's I like it a lot more now. Yeah, that's how, <laughs> that's how I hold it. I always try and do this, no, and I'm like, no, this yeah. is weird. No, it's um, always supposed to be your index finger, middle finger, ring finger. Always um, use three fingers. Always use three fingers when you're going in. Um, but anyway... It feels weird with the jimping. Yeah, and it's take like it a frag pattern. Um, <laughs> you like take it all back. Yeah, the, the frag um, pattern. See, now that's comfy. Yeah. Right? But the little palm swell. It's like the SLCC. I should have brought it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it, it's like there's a hole in the handle, mm -hmm. but you're not meant to use that hole. Like if you use the hole, it's it's it's, gonna be weird. it's weird shape. Like you, you got no control over this. If you want to yeah. do something, you're going to you're gonna cut something off, so right. um, you gotta be careful. But yeah, it's got the frag. I wanted to show the back. Yeah, no, totally, go Let's for it. it. But, um, Should be. But yeah, no, the jumping is very, no. <laughs> the, the jumping is very interesting on that one. But yeah, so I, I think, yeah, the CRKT is the only one here that's not made in America, actually, aside from the your, uh, stovepipe. Stovepipe, I think yeah. the rest of them are all American made. Um, but anyways, oh, gosh, let me, yeah, so when it comes down to value, um, it, it can be challenging, but I think that's the, the whole issue with Benchmade is that they're offering a very expensive price point. And the point that, that somebody called me on was that the um, the Payson, and the Payson is now okay. like, we're getting into the okay. like $700 range. Um, I Don't call me on exact price, but they were saying, you know, Spyderco would do the same thing. 
the thing is, I'd rather buy the Spider Co. than the Benchman, and that's personal preference, but mm -hmm. I also think that it's partially the Recenti, because this was a recent build. The stovepipe is still, you know, and it's expensive, it's like 425 450 or whatever, um, mm -hmm. but the Payson and the, what was, what was the first one? You're talking about the Nirvana. The Nirvana. They were expensive, but mm -hmm. I mean, this is, they just recently, is that they discontinued that? I don't know. The Nirvana's been discontinued this one. for years. Oh, this guy? I think this one was discontinued. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, a lot of them, like the Nirvana, we all knew was going to be a limited edition thing. The stovepipe, yeah. a limited edition. Um, just I like Recenti. Like, I yeah. like some of the Recenti knives. Peter Recenti does a good job. What I, the fuck does he know about? That's a Kanye quote. That's, I shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <Like, laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, so as far as like value goes, it is definitely subjective, but I think Spyderco definitely has a better execution, even out of their foreign manufacturers. Yeah. Um, their Chinese ones are a little questionable. I don't really yeah, like them. Yeah, I'm with, not like, the tenacious, the, uh, even yeah. though I came up like my first like nicer pr budget uh, production knife was a, was a tenacious and I mm -hmm. carried that a lot. Um, you know, it, <sighs> The Golden Colorado stuff is just so much better. And when yes. I got to a Manix, like, you can tell. So oh, for sure. it's, I mean, it's differences. And, you know, I used to work at a sporting goods store. And people would come in, they're like, I want, we're, we're making this a whole, you're going to have two videos here. You're going to have a, a, <laughs> How a we came up in influence the and then why you shouldn't uh, outsource to China, which has been coming up more and more. And their little fine. fucking spy balloon. Uh, but the, uh, they'd come in and they'd be like, oh, hey, like I want a quality, you know, good steel, solid build construction. They'd give me all their specs and they said, I want it made in America and I won't pay more than $50 for it, you know? And I'd be like, cool. Um, so you don't want a knife today? Like, you know, <laughs> right. like, hey, you want American quality, you got to pay American prices. And that's mm -hmm. just how it goes. Right. And, and, you know, the Tenacious was in that category. Like, it's good. And I've seen them break, you know. People try to pop a moose joint with a fucking Spyderco Tenacious yeah. and skin a caribou with a Microtech. Like, it's it's a bad day. But, um, you know, <laughs> that's why you have different knives for different things. But, um, yeah, so that... that is a little bit of a, a thing, you know, I mean, that, that was when a Manix was like a hundred bucks and that was the, the right. price point. I think now, I They're mean, like last time I looked at a Manix, we're at 200. So that means yeah. that the overall market has gone up on these mm -hmm. and you're probably spending about a hundred bucks on a decent knife, but, uh, or sorry, 200 bucks on a decent, um, American made. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and there are exceptions to the rule. If you look hard enough, yeah. I mean, I will say once again, Hoag's Deca is a really good exception to that rule, but yeah, any more 150, hundred or to two hundred dollars is about the going price i will say luckily for the viewership that have made it this far um what i do with a lot of my gear acquisitions not even gonna lie here is uh like i go on ebay and i'll find like slightly um used blades like uh one i've been looking at a lot from what is it spider co is the yojimbo um yeah. because i've been on a bit of a warn cliff kick what's the price um, of the yojimbo the yojimbos if you get them like their MSRP or not MSRP, but street price is like one seventy one. But I've been seeing some on eBay go for like one forty, one forty region, which is still. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the Yojimbo used to be a hundred and twenty five dollar. It did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Inflation. I know. It, it's, <laughs> no, it's soft. Fuck, man. And we're still talking an S thirty B blade with black G ten. Like that's a basic knife. We're yeah. talking. We're not talking about the special edition ones. Um, but man, like even the shamans, they. You cannot find even a used shaman for like under two hundred bucks. That's insane because that's mm. definitely hundred. Man, my my pricing on that lower end is just so out of touch. Like yeah. you know, maybe 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 the narrows needs to be a five hundred dollar knife, but that is obnoxious. Um, you know. Yeah. Wow, I just discovered inflation on this <laughs> podcast today. Yeah. No, I mean <laughs> it's it's tough. No, it really is tough. It sucks, but yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, inflation sucks. Knife pricing sucks. Everything sucks. The world's gonna burn. Um. <laughs> Get political down in the comments just, because just you know it's hell. good for the. Can I say the word? Can I say the, the algorithm? The algorithm. Okay, we could say that. I don't know if YouTube uh, with their yeah. massive overreach. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
I, I yeah, I don't know if I could say that, but we said it, so it's yeah, out so there. It's now. out there. That's so, correct. Uh, <laughs> Rules be damned. Um, we're also gonna accumulate a high amount of swear words here. If you don't hear from us after this video, it's because we got silence. You know, you know who to call. Uh, <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> that was a, that more back to ASMR. I, I want to see at the end of the video just a, a clipping of all of the AS. Anyway, so I think um, for the most part, unless you really uh, want to add anything, I feel like we covered uh, like coming up and kind of where we got started. Undoubtedly, like maybe in the beginning, it was a little bit different. There were some inspirations. Like I played video games and I think that kind of led me, especially like Minecraft and such, you know, kind of was like outdoorsy. I wanted to become outdoorsy. So I started looking at outdoor tools. But uh, the next part I wanted to really hit outside of that, like, coming up story. And maybe we'll dig into it. Maybe there's, like, a part two here. Yeah. But, like, what were some grail knives? Because I feel like it, in order to talk about, like, your knives, which your knives are pretty dope, um, definitely check these guys out. Follow I know me on the YouTube. This is, like, this dude over here is such a thirst trap because he throws... <laughs> you know, pictures like this of this knife out here, and he's like, oh, but you can't buy it. You can't buy it. You know, it. like, you can't buy it. He's like, he's exactly like those freaking OnlyFans girls who, like, they show you just enough. It's all behind but, like, the paywall. You, you know, can see my knives and my... But it's all behind a paywall. It's all a thirst trap, and he just does this because he's not actually—he doesn't even make knives for sale. He just does this yeah. to tempt people. He's, people are like, "Oh, for I want this." For the culture, all right? right? right. It's, no, um, no. I mean, so the problem with that one is actually there were issues, um, and that one specifically are scales. And my scales aren't pretty. I'm not—I'm not that prissy about my knife making. I'm very more. Um, practical uh, mm -hmm. but you know it, as, that one was real bad and I had to pull some shit and so I don't feel comfortable selling that whereas like my these guys the way and I'm changing this uh, because I, I believe in changing and improving your product these guys are perfectly functional these holes are a little crooked that is like an oval underneath the scale <laughs> like, uh, you know there's only three quarters that are actually seated and that bothers me and it just is messy um, and it was never going to be perfect like the lanyard hole is still off um, and I, I had to pull some stuff to make that happen and that can't go out um, and so you you pick your your quality tolerances and that that was just unacceptable so um, I'm going to make more of those uh, and I am trying to move to more production stuff and we could talk about my company another day um, and I know we're going to talk oh, about sure. my design uh, here in this video but um, as far as grail knives go um, is uh, that was what yeah. where we were heading? Um, you got the Holy Trinity. Uh, I think that yeah. Hinderer, Reeve, and Strider, um, and then there is the fourth, the the dark stepchild, the black sheep of the trio, the trifecta, mm -hmm. and that is Microtech, uh, because I think that it was one of those things that um, if you were really into collecting, you had a Microtech. Um, but that was one that was adjacent and I feel like it stands its own class. Like it's mm -hmm. an OTF versus a frame lock, um, well, and folder. I will say they're so calm elites too. Like I've seen some, I used to yeah. own a micro tech, so calm elite that saw some time in the sandbox and it was just beat to hell. And it was original D2 version. You it was really like a liner shouldn't lock. shouldn't pull your knife out at the playground. Yeah, <laughs> no, not wrong. No you offense, know? I just, I, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Ah, uh, but man, that thing was just beat yeah. to hell. I have some pictures. Maybe I'll roll them in here. I don't know if you've seen pictures of it. I threw it up on my Instagram. But yeah, no, the OTFs are very unique. Um, but yeah, you can keep going. No, I mean, that. those are the, the big ones. But mm -hmm. I mean, at the time... So I feel like, you know, a part of this conversation is the, the culture and the, you know, social media. I mean, for me, it was YouTube. Uh, I'm sure that there are people who came up on Instagram uh, in the last couple of years. And I kind of took a big break there uh, while I was going to school. And so I'm not as familiar with some of the stuff that happened in between. But mm -hmm. uh, that early days, you know, what, 10 years, I mean, pushing 15 at this right. point. Um that's what I'm more familiar with, but YouTube was the thing. And so, you know, we were very influenced by what the YouTubers had. I remember uh, Jim did that video on the snafu and for a while the snafu right. was the grail. 
Um, and now I can get one from CKF for, you know, less than $1,500, uh, which is nice. But, um, you know, I feel like that stuff, you know, I probably would have said like a Frank Fisher Archangel at one point, um, mm -hmm. which we're not, we're not into now. Um, you know, uh, Kingdom Armory was probably one of those grail knives. Um, but now I feel like my tastes have kind of changed. Uh, I mean, I'm not really... Um, you were asking about like modern like grail knives, right? For, right. Well, or, and I think just grail era. knives. I'm just thinking like grail knives, especially ones that you have. And obviously, I know you don't yeah. have like all your knives here to reference. No. I was gonna, I'll get into mine too when we come to my bit. But yeah, no, like just grail knives throughout the time. I think it is very interesting just to hammer your point in that like definitely the tastes change and evolve um, and, and in some ways they stay the same like this yeah. gavco it did take me a long time to get a gavco custom but, but i knew i was going to get a gavco see, custom that's, at some that's point that's so different because it's modern like he right. only started doing that in the last what, what like, five six years maybe longer actually i don't know i think a little bit longer with the uh, makos probably Dang. but i think like 2014 ish maybe it's been closer to 10 years uh, okay Damn. um I'm getting old. I know, I know. <laughs> He's been making the Makos for a long time. Now, you're yeah. right. Like, the Nurse is a really new design. Um, this is not an older design. I think, like I said, it came around, like, 2020. Um, so it's pretty new. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, that definitely... You know Gavco, and you like Gavco because of what he did back mm -hmm. then. Um, and that's what's influenced your taste and style. Right. Um, I feel like... Man, I don't even know what my modern grail knives are. There's so many. I mean, a Nalu. Nalu is top tier right now. Um, as far as what I actually own, because I'm not going to touch a Nalu for under, like, what do you say, maybe 3K. Uh, and I that's not table. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Poltergeist, which was more of a weight thing. Like, I got in on his books. I'm actually on for a second one. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll go for three. Uh, but they... <laughs> You know, that's more of just a waiting game, and I could buy one on the secondary for pretty cheap, you know, like if I could find one again. Um, I have the Gavco, which is more of just a heritage You're piece. Where's the little guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this was kind of a grail piece to own. Uh, same thing with that Tough Knives down here. I think your Graham, too. Uh, at least... Yeah, I, I, I had think... a nicer Graham. Yeah. I had a much nicer Graham. Uh, it was... it was I, I miss it dearly, but um, it's in a, in a good home. The Tough Knives, this is what he calls the scrapper, um, and it's just a one-off that I, you know, kind of uh, commandeered, uh, <laughs> but it's a, it's a really cool piece, it's sharpened on the back end, and it, it's very representative of what I think is, is Tough Thumbs, oh, th th Tough Thumbs, and his style uh, back then, which was just kind of funky, the Tanix right. were weird for the age even, uh -huh. um, and so... Yeah, yeah, he had a very weird uh, design ethos, but I mean, also very, very unique. Like it's, uh, it's unmistakable if you know tough. Like, yeah, you know. He, he definitely has a style. Mm -hmm. Who else? Who's uh? Who's I mean, on the grill? The Graham, I think you know this, this isn't the nicest one, but I think still as far as like a maker goes, um, and that is production. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, just. Just owning some of their designs and some of their work. Um, I have a Toshi Prism, which I think is kind of nice to, to own. Um, I have a Mac Rockstar. Uh, Marsh is, is a legend from that era, although not really my jam. I just like the Marsh uh, Rockstar uh, Mac, uh, Marsh Almost Custom, uh, because it was so well put together for that era uh, or that time. It was probably around 2016, 2017 that I picked that up. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I mean, obviously all of my Hartley knives are incredible. Um, yes. So, I mean, you got to have one grails. of those in the collection. Everyone's you know. a grail. But holding this guy over here. No. <laughs> Bike is a really, it's a really slick blade. Yeah. No, I think so for me, as far as customs go, like the skirmish is probably like as much heresy and as much as I like, I dislike Benchmade a lot nowadays, but I would consider Benchmade definitely, they had like a golden age. I think in most people's opinion, they had a golden age. That golden age does vary person to person. I personally think it was around like the late 
2000s to early 2010s and that just happened to be right around when this guy came out and this is probably like the earliest grail that like I remember having is I saw this especially on websites I never really saw it in person because it was a pretty rare knife it's a massive knife it uh, is and, and that's, I think that's probably the Part of the problem is I never saw it in real life, and it was like, oh, this is a really big knife. The mini skirmish is, is this, tight. I yeah. don't think I've ever handled one, but I think it would be cool. I love this yeah. blade profile, though. It is, and I love just Excellent. the overall look of it. But this was one knife that, like, especially, like, as a teen, I looked at, and I was like, at the time, they were going for, like, $400, which now is, like, a drop in the bucket. You were like, um, you were like, oh, dude, but, you know, if I only had the money. Right, like, as, like, a teen that doesn't really have a job and just goes to school and stuff, I was like, man, if only I could get that knife. And so this knife place I did end up getting later in life once I started making money. But um, this was the first real grail for me. And I get that, like I said, it's a bench made. It is a blue box production, so it's not super special though these guys are now they do track for like over 500 bucks because they're just rare they're discontinued ones in good condition are hard to find um and this is still a nice knife like it's full titanium scales s30v blade and i think the biggest thing for me is i've just been a really big sucker for just gentle recurved blades and uh, i loved the blackwood skirmish as far as a custom knife goes obviously pretty much impossible to find those nowadays but uh yeah that was my first one obviously like he pointed out um and as i showed the the holy trinity um were you know like the strider the um sabenza and the hinder like i namely think the xm18 the strider smg and the sabenza 21 were kind of my holy trinity and in fact i actually ended up getting a sabenza as like my first higher end knife and uh, i got like a plain jane uh, and single grind uh sabenza and that was like my first kind of foray into like really quality knives and i was just blown away by it did you sell that I did, yeah. I know. I know we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. <laughs> the the Insingos um, are cool. I remember I, I wanted a knife so art carbon fiber small. Yeah. Um, and Insingo. that was kind of the thing for a while, but never had the money at the right time, never yeah. pulled the trigger. So. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I would not mind a knife art um, carbon fiber, either in Kosi or Sabenza. There's a bigger discussion on like grail knives, like what constitutes a grail knife. Cause I mean, you know, some things are so readily available that you could just get one, right? Like mm -hmm. something like a blackwood is actually hard to come by Genuinely. in my opinion. Um, but like I've seen Nalu's for sale. I just don't have the money. Are we talking about like a good deal or, you know, are we for talking grails? Like, I mean, yeah. I think for me, a grail is like, and, and maybe it's a little bit hard because, I mean, we, we love knives, but anything that you're genuinely, like, I would say something that, like, I don't know, something that you're, like, genuinely trying to go after, something that you're hunting for, something that you, like, you're right, I can walk into a knife shop at any time and buy, let's say, like, even a Hogue Deca, right? Like, I can go on just about any website and buy one at any time. The Hogue Deca was easy to get for me, right? And it doesn't mean that I don't like it and that's not a good knife. But I'm talking, like, scouring the web, the interwebs. Like, with my Encosi over here, wherever it is, the Encosi. I feel I, like that has to be, like, an individual knife for me. Like, you know, it right. has to be, like, this one specific Gavco, oh, you know what? What? The Bigfoot knife shetty. <laughs> I would... I would scour the internet for one of those, uh, but I'm not sure I would want to pay what they wanted to... to I don't know, maybe if it was... I pay I pay a decent <laughs> amount, amount of money. You I, heard them, guys, if you have one. Yeah, if you have one a... One makes you know, money. I, I don't know, I don't know. Come correct, all right? Like, you know, <laughs> let's do some research. Uh, but that might be one that I would actually be interested in as a Bigfoot. Um, I mean, I'd be interested in, like, an Excalibur. Just, I, I'd need somebody... Put it next to a ruler. I should go watch that video again because I'm pretty sure the Gavco is only like it's probably only like 12 inches long. Yeah, and, no, I don't think he ever made like really like huge blades. Yeah, uh, the he when he commented on that video of, of me, uh, he mentioned that it was more of a he didn't want to call it a machete, he right. it, he used to call them knife shetties. Um, uh, <laughs> but the um, the he said the Excalibur like dwarfed it. So I'm imagining like the Nichetti being kind of like maybe 
Arvensis size, mm-hmm. uh, and then like a machete would be over here. Maybe like this is the Excalibur size. Right. I don't know. Um, it's Excalibur, so it'd be like a sword. I don't know. Um, right. But yeah, no, so I feel like grails are, like, it's different for everyone, but for me, what I constitute as a grail is something that, like, you are going after a specific model, specific type. Like, I was going okay. after a, a custom nurse, right? And maybe, like, I didn't know I was going to end up with this custom nurse, but I was going after, like, Gavco makes many things, the hyphen, the Mako, um, the, the nurse, and many different other designs, right? But I wanted a nurse specifically, yep. right? And so, same with the Nkosi. Like, Chris Reeve makes multiple knives, but I knew I wanted a Mick and Lay um, in Kosi, like that's what I was going after. And it's like, you scour the internet, you scour the forms, like you know what you want and you're going after. And it might not be, like you might not know exactly what you want, maybe you do, um, yeah. but yeah. And like, I remember the skirmish for me, it, it did kind of pop up. It was kind of like, oh, I found one, but yeah. I was specifically going for a skirmish. I just wanna back up <laughs> just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Did you call that a Micken? A Mick inlay. Like a like a like a McChicken for <laughs> yes like like no it's M I C inlay from micarta inlay he i must be getting old the, the raffles the lols get out of here no. <laughs> it's not um, Mick, i was like i knew exactly what it was but i was like micken i've never heard Mick that terminology <laughs> okay all right anyways <laughs> the micarta inlaid version of <laughs> the Incosi was what i wanted or i should say a large micarta inlay in Kosi i guess when you put I it wanted. like that like a specific um, build would constitute a grail like that like that like, one knife out there um and i don't know what that is for me to be honest with you like right now mm-hmm. there's there's a couple there's there's a couple out there that if i if i dug hard enough i could find but it, again like half the time you're you know where that knife lives mm-hmm. and you're just throwing money at somebody and, and they right. probably don't want to sell you know and that's yeah but yeah, so for me, that's kind of what constitutes a uh, grail. I feel like another one that is a little bit maybe of a questionable grail is the one the uh, knife he's playing with here. And I say I it's would... a questionable grail because I technically already had this XM18 when I bought that XM18. So I knew like a grail knife for me was an XM18, but I wasn't going to stop until I got, like for me, the Holy Trinity was, once again, the Sabenza 21, the three and a half inch xm18 and the sng so i should have the sng out but yeah the sng should be here but it, it i, I did bring be. a pt but right but essentially you know like this but scaled up so anyways that that's why like this was i call a questionable grail because i was going after one in this one i have a bad habit of looking at you know knife bsts and i just so happened to see this for a really good price this like is a, a good score smoking deal and it was purple, which if you guys don't know already, purple is one of my favorite colors, like dark purple. And I was like, it, it, it was coming home with me. It wasn't, I, I was, t- I was going to buy it. Like, so it, it was something I was looking for, though I kind of unintentionally found that one. Um, so it was more of like a passive thing. But anyway, so that's one of them that I would consider a grail a little bit. And then of course, one of my most recent grail acquisitions is this full custom Gavco nurse. As I've kind of mentioned throughout this banter, um, like I, I knew that I wanted a nurse, wasn't sure that, you know, like I wasn't sure when I was gonna get one, wasn't sure what exact custom, like custom, like size, colors, all that stuff. But this one came together. I did know I wanted an XL because the nurses as a whole, even as an XL, as you guys can see here, like this is a pretty small knife. I mean, it's overall opened length is 7.1 inches. so pretty small but uh i knew that i wanted one of them in my collection i would say two another one that i would call a questionable grail similar to my hinder is a the mini com that i have for or from emerson this is by no means a an expensive knife and i feel like sometimes with grails we're like oh it has to be expensive but i knew that i wanted a commander from emerson really badly because i just love the deep recurve and for me this is another one that unintentionally came together because i wanted an old emerson and so this is a 2009 production emerson mini com and yeah so like it being a commander it being old school was like it kind of came together and i was like do you know about the emerson eagle 
I do. I know of its existence. It is. It's a pretty neat knife. Um, They're really nice. Uh, they feel very good in the hand. That's one that I would probably put on that list because I, I don't know. I mean, technically, I could get one if I wanted to pay secondary, but. If I could win a lotto and get uh, one of those, I would be very, very happy, and that would be like a, a dream come true. For Although sure. it's hard to keep knives when somebody's trying to pay you like oh, 5K yeah. over table. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, totally. It, it, yeah, I understand that. It, uh, that's a lot of money, and it's like, mm, I could do a lot of things with yeah. a lot much money. But yeah, so those are some of, I think, like the grails slash questionable grails for me. Some of them definitely, like I said, I pursued hard and, uh, you know, like found them and like sifted through a lot of things. And then also, you know, uh, my friend here, we, we both are in a lot of the same forums. And so, you know, we'll send each other, you know, <laughs> like, oh, hey, look what I just found. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it's led to me getting into some good deals. And uh, have and you bought any of those that I sent you? I'm trying to remember. I feel like I have. I can't exactly pinpoint. And some of them I don't tell him about. Like that hinder, I didn't tell him about that. I just, I was yeah, like, I'm not going to let him good, see that. Because I would have liked it. I, I, I'm real weird about hinderer, but I, I really like that one. Um, and yeah, I it's, almost want to like nice. go on the search for one, but right. that, them's knife making money. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it is tough. Definitely. I think like being in, I think what makes it interesting is like he is a knife maker. I'm obviously a knife content creator. So like for me, my money goes into knives to make videos and I do enjoy, like it's not solely like, oh, I just put all my money into this. It's something that I do enjoy personally. Whereas you have a little bit more of like, you are a collector, you want to buy knives, but you also want to make your own knives yeah. to establish your brand. At some point, um, you know, every, every time I buy another knife, it's, equipment that i could buy and right. so i i, I have a lot of you know conversations with myself <laughs> no it's, it's honest no. <laughs> right and i mean especially at the like the level that we're spending money i mean once again like hinders 400 easy you know a bead lot blaster. of these knives that's a bead blaster right there right <laughs> and even if it's not one specific like piece of equipment it's like man how many belts could that buy for a belt yeah. sander how many surprisingly not that much belts are Probably. fucking expensive and so yeah. that's that's kind of where i'm at now i'd love to get into making folders and stuff like that but yeah um yeah the collecting side it i mean that's that's the fun part i mean i i got into knives for the same reason most people do it's just uh there's something appealing about you know quality crafted stuff mm -hmm. and um i think that you know it's worth paying that extra dollar amount for and and um now that i make knives be nice to knife makers man this shit's <laughs> like, <laughs> hard. that's why like like i was telling him off camera you know like i get so many questions when people find out that like uh like i collect so many knives i have so many knives and they're like so do you make your own knives i'm like nah man I, like i respect what people do when it comes to making knives but i i don't have the patience to do this i'm kind of like a, a connoisseur like people that love to smoke and collect you know like cigars or you know different types of bourbons or you know um different things like that like that's me i enjoy a good knife but uh, this one's not done yet but um it's all, it's still pretty to look at. Got the micarta. I, it looks sick. I need to set in and fix the grind up, but um, I love this this caramel vintage caramel micarta. We don't know vintage where it's from. Caramel micarta. Um, <laughs> Just from somewhere. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't. Um, there's a whole debate like people calling stuff. Uh, micarta when it's. Uh, no, not micarta. Uh, Westinghouse. Rick. Oh. Uh, Westinghouse micarta is like a specific breed of the best recipe, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of sought after stuff. Um, it, you follow Hawk's Nest on? Uh, I don't think I do. He's a Maytrails guy. He he just got some sick uh, Westy in, but um, he'll you'll start learning about the different stuff. So I bought some. I have some vintage uh, butterscotch uh, Westy rolls that I'm looking at. I, I don't know if you, I've started to hoard uh, knife making materials and I have a lot of Maytrails that I really shouldn't buy, but um, that stuff is cool. Uh, like, like I really like a nice, well put together, not just slapping whatever on, right? Like it's a, it's a tasteful build that works together. So mm -hmm. um, I've been hoarding materials for when I get into folders or like I do uh, nice stuff, you know, like some, some, really nice inlays on something mm -hmm. uh, but 
Yeah, I mean, the the grail discussion and as far as like collecting goes, it, it's it's hard to do now. Uh, but, you know, one day, like, you know, I'd still like to collect from my favorite makers. And I just really have a thing about specific knives, specific builds, um, and then like quality craftsmanship. Um, but I also like to buy into the brand of the maker. It's why I like Ray's mm -hmm. stuff so much, just because it's well built. Um, it's really tasteful design. Like they're so simple, but every every detail, every angle is so perfect. Right, and um, it's like they a grill think knife about everything. A grill knife would be one of Dre one of bleh, one of Ray's uh, Dami um, like a lotus, um, and I I'll have to find a picture of a lotus for you. Um, but, uh, those would be absolutely killer to have. And I, I'd really like a Tonto Jasmine cause that was one of those first ones that I saw at the, mm -hmm. at the shows. Um, I think that really does speak a lot to like, oftentimes when it, when you look back at it, like I find myself wanting to go more and more like vintage, especially with yeah. custom makers, like trying to get some of their first stuff. And I, I think that's like, honestly, a lot of people like yeah. you've even encountered that yourself where people want. Yeah, people want the your... the beginner stuff um, because it, it's got flaws, and it's like I'm just learning, but I don't want to sell it because it's got flaws. Um, so there's this weird balance of, of integrity, and I, I've seen that backfire for people. Well, mm -hmm. they sell their bad work, um, yeah, like and then real it gets bad. circulated out there yeah. into the world. But this guy was one of those like Gabco early work. Um, these little yeah. fixed plates. This is all I grew up on, so. Um, I actually have a couple designs in a similar um, size range. I mean, that's what the Pike started as, was something about this size, and you can see where it where it's kind of gone. Uh, but I just wanted something classic that was very utilitarian, um, and then something that could handle meat processing and, and right. you know a king salmon versus a trout. Um, right. That's probably pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, but uh, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, grills are definitely interesting. Um, and once again, I, I like talking about grills with everyone because I think everything, uh, or everyone has different perspectives. Like some people might look at the Spider Co. with its blended steel, um, with CPM 154 and CPM S 90 V. And you know, this is no doubt like a bad knife by any means, but this might be a grail for someone. Yeah, and, uh, it was and, a grail for me. Uh, well, a grail to get it at a good price, and I feel like that matters too. Like. Mm -hmm. Again, you can just throw money at the problem and you will get whatever, but not everybody can have the budget to buy their grill knife. Like, I don't have enough money to buy a custom nozzle. I'd love to get one, and that's what makes it a grail, right? And I've gotten deals on knives and stuff, and, and so that, that factors in for me is like, if I could get a Nalu for a decent price, I got that for steel. Um, shout oh, yeah. out to Wes for hooking it up, Dude. but um. <clears throat> you know, like I didn't want to pay the appreciation on a sprint run and, and called me difficult, but you know, it's like, look, this is a hobby and, uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, I could buy a Sabenza with the amount of, that those go for, you oh, know? Yeah. And so yeah. it, it didn't make sense. Uh, but I had been after one for a while and, and he knew that. So, uh, thank you again. But yeah, I, I love that. I was, he, he gave me a steal. On oh, I know. He got you in a raffle. Me. You told me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So he, he gave me a good deal on it, liquidate some cash, and uh, we know we both came in on top, and, and uh, that's all you can ask for. So. For sure.